One of the difficulties of chemistry is the incredible number of ways we get to represent molecules. Here's an example of a structure that's got four carbons. This butadiene has got two uh, double bonds. Um, this is a simple line drawing. Of course, we can leave the hydrogens off, and most of the time we do that, producing this structure. But we also learned that we can move the double bonds within a molecule by a process called resonance. I could take this double bond here, the pi bond, move it here. Um, and in the process, I can't have four bonds to this carbon because, you know, remember, there's a hydrogen on it, so this comes out. I can form this structure now, which is a double bond between the carbon 2 and 3. Uh, in doing so, I have a lone pair on this final carbon. There's a formal negative charge there. And where I started from, I'm withdrawing a pair of electrons here, so it's a positive charge here. So what I could do is even from here, I could create a uh, resonance hybrid of these in which uh, every bond between the carbons has double bond character, so I can draw just the dotted line. So already we've seen one, two, three, four ways you could possibly draw the structure of this molecule. Let's add a couple more. Uh, these are generated on the computer wireframe model, which is really a line drawing. But now we can do a ball and stick model. We show the double bonds and we show the actual hydrogens. Uh, so this is yet another way to show them. And of course it's not um, uh, actually to scale, so we could actually draw what it might look like in a space flow model in which the grays are carbon and the whites are hydrogen. So we already we've shown six different ways we could represent this molecule. Now let's look in more detail at the bonding and look at Huckold diagrams to show that. So let's look at this original structure, the butadiene. I got separate double bonds. Uh, again, we could draw this in perspective diagram. And this time I've, uh, I've sort of drawn in perspective from the side. Uh, I didn't put wedges or dashes in for these hydrogens, but I think you can get the feel for it. Um, and I've shown the p orbitals. And the p orbitals would have to overlap to produce a pi bond. So I show two blue lobes up here and I have the two blue lobes down here, a pi bond there and a pi bond here, shown by the pi bond line. Uh, well I can actually show what those molecular orbitals look like. That sideways overlap of p orbital will give me a pi bond. Uh, that's represented here between these two carbons. So there's a carbon here and a carbon here, and here's the lobe density above the nucleus. This is below it. Likewise, over here, the way I've colored this, the blue lobes are down at the bottom. So there's a carbon and carbon, and so you can see it's a pi bond. There's no direct electron density in this particular bond between the two carbon atoms, but rather it's above and below the plane. Uh, now, I can take the same perspective diagram with the p orbitals, and instead of looking at it side view, let's look at it top down. And sometimes that's an easier thing to do. Here it is. Uh, so I have, uh, looking top down, you see I can see the top blue p orbital, the top blue p orbital, and of course these are all on the plane again. Uh, and for these, I see the light orbital, light orbital. This is looking down on top of these. So, and again, you can see there'd be a double bond between here because we have constructive interference between those. The wavelength would sort of go like that. And likewise, between here, discrete double bonds. Now, from a Huckel diagram perspective, we can show this simply, all of this is simply showing, again, just showing the, the pi bonds as a line with four p orbitals. The top two are sh uh, the, the one, the, Two on the left are shaded on the top, as illustrated over here, and the bottom two are shaded there. This is the top view of the molecular orbitals, and I think you can see top down. Uh, this corresponds pretty well to a double bond between these two carbons and a double bond between these two carbons. Let's look at the fully uh, so resonant hybrid of this molecule, in which we said maybe we could draw this with a partial double bond uh, connecting each of the carbons. Well, let's look at the uh, pi orbitals and the molecular orbitals that would uh, result. Here we go. I, I've just shown it over here. This is a sidewise perspective. Uh, I have complete overlap, uh, delocalization of the pi electrons, and I can show that by these p orbitals here, the blue top, blue top, blue top, blue here. And you can simply, because this is all planar, you can imagine them delocalized over the entire molecule. This would be the molecular orbital um, rendering of that. You can see that there's this constant blue uh, density above the plane, so it's a pi bond, and then uh, the white shaded here essentially is represented by the red. Uh, likewise, if I'm taking this Lewis structure, which is a sideways view, sort of perspective, and I looked at it top down, if I were looking top down in here with the p orbitals, I'd be looking top down at the blue orbitals, the tops are the positive density of the blue orbitals, uh, and we could represent that in a Huckel diagram, again, a line with four p orbitals in a row, and the very top lobes would be shaded. And again, here's a top-down view, uh, looking at this structure, 
uh, and I think you can see that this would be the lowest energy form of molecular orbitals uh, because essentially the electrons need to localize over the entire molecule. So imagine one long wavelength here, very long wavelength, low energy. If we go back up to the original version that we drew, uh, the butadiene in which I had discrete double bonds, uh, and again, you can imagine here is the, uh, I'm tracing now sort of a wavelength here, here and here, uh, and the wavelength is longer than it is here. There is one node right here. Uh, there are zero nodes here in this particular tracing out this wavelength, so this is higher in energy. But again, this is a bonding orbital because it really corresponds very well to our picture, the Lewis structure in which I have discrete uh, double bonds. Now let's look at the antibonding. Um, close. Well, here's an example right here. This is, would be the LUMO, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. Uh, if I looked at the electron density here, uh, here's my p orbitals. Uh, I'll put a, the bottom lobe is blue, top two are blue, and the bottom lobe here. This almost looks like there's a double bond here, right? As we did before in one of the resonance hybrid. But that's higher in energy because remember we created uh, charge separation of the molecule when initially we had none. So this is actually could correspond somewhat well to this particular antibonding orbital. And again, this is the sideways perspective. Uh, looking on it in terms of a pictorial perspective, you see this blue lobe down here corresponds to this, and then there's two carbons here with this blue density, this blue lobe here reflecting this, and then finally the last carbon with a blue lobe on the bottom. Now if I were to take this, this sideways view and look at it top down, like we've done before, uh, again, everything is planar here. So again, this is what it would look like. The two blue lobes uh, in the middle. And we could imagine the equivalent of a double bond between those because of the overlap. Uh, and then uh, the, the white lobe sticking out corresponding to the red lobe here. White lobe corresponding to the red lobe here. And this would be the huckle that result from that. So again, looking down the top, uh, we see the first one would be the white or the, or the red. Uh, the two blues here and then the, uh, the blue on the bottom. So again, here uh, we have, uh, if we traced out the wavelength, uh, we'd have a series of nodes here. We have two nodes now, uh, and we're getting higher and higher energy the more nodes we have. Uh, so this is definitely an anti-bonding orbital. And of course, this would be a top-down view, looking at, uh, for instance, the molecule sort of oriented like this. We have the red or the open p orbital, uh, coming up and then we have this overlap of these p orbitals uh, as il illustrated here and then finally this again. Finally let's look at uh, the last MO uh, and that can be shown here in the sideways view in which look we alternate between the blue uh, lobe pointing up and the blue, blue lobe pointing down. So you can imagine uh, the nodes in this particular molecule has got the highest number of nodes. I cross over here one, two, three. Um, uh, Let's look at the last symbol, uh, and I just had to delete the, the um, Lewis structure here. Uh, in the last symbol, let's look at the sideways view. Now in the last example, I actually had to remove one of the Lewis structures, would be an antibody orbital in which there are no sideways overlapping interactions possible because each of these p orbitals is out of space with the one next to it. So again, here we would have this representation from a sideways perspective. This would be what the, uh, the huckle would look like. Uh, again, there would be uh, essentially lots of nodes here, maximal number of nodes, no overlap, so this is the highest energy antibonding orbital. Again, a top-down view of this, looking here, everything's in the plane, uh, two blues on the top, those represent the top of the p orbitals, and again, a linear huckle diagram uh, with p orbitals on the line would just show alternating um, sh uh, blue shaded and then um, the red shaded or the open ones, and you can see where the, the nodes would be. So this is the highest energy and this is a top-down view. So if you think about it, uh, we went from our initial representation of space filling, you know, ball and stick model to something like this, the Lewis structures. And it's amazing how good the Lewis structures were to explain the bonding that we can see in butadiene. Uh, of course, we had to invoke the concept of resonance, and in doing so, we were able to delocalize these electrons. Remember, the further you can spread electrons around, the lower the energy. So people discovered resonance before they knew anything about molecular orbitals, but now we know that the lowest energy molecular orbital is one in which the electrons are most delocalized. 
Likewise, we were able to really draw three little structures corresponding to these three MOs. We couldn't do it from here because there's really no pi bonding interactions at all. I guess we could draw it, but with no pi bonding interactions.